everybody. So now that you've seen an RL circuit, let's talk about an RC circuit. So in this case, we have a switch here. So, so we can ignore this stuff. And then we have a source here. And then again, you can always do a source transformation and replace that with a Norton equivalent. Whereas this can be a Thevenin equivalent of something more complicated. But if the switch is in this position here, and if you wait a long time, so like more, greater than five time constants, then everything is constant. The voltage everywhere is constant, the current is constant. What happens when you have constant voltage across a capacitor? What's the current going through a capacitor? Like this, right? So if the voltage across the capacitor is constant, take a look at that, the derivative is zero. So the current going through the capacitor is zero. And notice that capacitor is in series with this resistor. So the current going through this resistor R1 is also zero. Again, just ignore this part. Okay, so the current in the resistor is zero. And according to Ohm's law, that means the voltage across the resistor is also zero. So let's say we go around this loop KVL, right? Then we got minus VG plus I R1 plus whatever voltage across the capacitor. And if the current through the resistor is zero, this is zero, then take a look at this. The voltage across the capacitor is the source voltage. It's hogging all of it. The capacitor takes all the voltage, the resistor gets none of it. So that's when you wait a long time with the switch over in position A. And then now if we switch it over to B, then we can ignore this side of it now. So now you just have a capacitor here with a voltage that we know. VG, and then it's connected to this resistor over here. Uh, just a little note, you see how it's drawn like this? That's because capacitors have a direction, like this is plus and this is minus. So you have to be mindful, those are polarized capacitors, like electrolytic, meaning the, it's, the composition is an electrolytic capacitor. Some like ceramic capacitors are non-polarized, so then it doesn't matter which direction. And also capacitors, like say there is a capacitance, like say one microfarad, and then also a voltage rating. Let's say it's um, 10 volts. You have to be careful not to exceed the voltage rating of a capacitor. Just like how resistors have a power rating, like quarter watt, capacitors have a voltage rating. If you exceed the power rating of a resistor, it could burn or catch on fire. If you exceed the voltage rating of a capacitor, it can literally explode. Like it can pop like a firecracker. It's pretty loud. So, and then, like I've been in the room where my colleagues, it's not their fault. Like you can have component failures and then you have over voltage on a capacitor, it exceeds the rating and then it pops. And that happened to my electric bike. I once built an electric bike with a 48 volt motor controller and one of the capacitors exploded in there and it just wiped everything out so i just had to replace a bunch of parts i replaced the mosfets and the capacitors and then while i was in there i rebuilt it so it could run at 72 volts instead of 48 and i ran it at 72 vo volts at 40 amps so you can calculate how much power that is and that electric bike can go 50 miles per hour that's another story for another time. Okay, so back to our RC circuit. So we have this at some voltage that we know over here, that's VG. And then, right, see how these have gotta be that same voltage over here. So let's say we do KCL at this node up here. So I have current going this way, current going this way. So the current through the capacitor plus the current through the resistor equals zero. The current through the capacitor is C dV dt. The current through the resistor, V 
over r. And here we are again, another first order ODE. This one is homogeneous. Let's have a homogeneous first order ODE with constant coefficients. How do you solve it? Separation of variables. All right, so let's say, let's move this where we have more space. Let me move V over R on the other side. Okay, and then how about let's move C over here. Now let's do separation of variables. Let's exchange these two. So then we have dv over v, and on this side, dt. Right, so that's successful separation of variables, and we'll just integrate from t equal to zero to some time t, v at t equal to zero, I'll just call that v naught, to some v. What's the integral of dv over v? Natural log log v of t minus log of v naught, which you can always rewrite like this. And then on that side, minus one over rc, t minus zero. Okay, and then remember the trick, the inverse of natural log is exponential function. Okay, so that leaves us with v over v of t over v naught equals e to the minus one over rc t. And let's just move this right here. Okay, so that's the voltage. And again, what's the time constant? Just look at whatever is sitting right here. Whatever is sitting there. Take the reciprocal and that is the time constant. So for this particular example, that's t over tau. For tau would be rc, right? Because it's the reciprocal of that. And if you look at the resistor, now we know the voltage. So what's the current? The current through the resistor is V over R, right? So just this over R. All right, so that's the current going through the resistor. What's the power? Voltage times current. Just multiply these two together. So let's multiply those together. Let's see, there we have V naught squared over R, this times this. So there's two of those, E to the minus two over RC. Okay, so that's the power. What about the energy being absorbed by the resistor? Energy, we just integrate the power over time from zero to T. All right, so let me do that. So we got V naught squared over R. Okay, and if we integrate this, I need the reciprocal of that, minus RC over two, and then integrate this. I mean, it's this times this from zero to T. So if we evaluate that, then it looks like minus one. Okay, let's clean that up just a little bit. Okay, so we got R and R, so we got one half C V naught squared, and then see this minus sign? I'll just multiply that through here. 1 minus e to the minus 2 over rc t. And there we go. This is the energy absorbed by the resistor. Okay, so I don't want to ramble on too long, so I'll see you on the next video.